What's up everyone? Today we are going to be building lightweight acoustic panels. The keyword being lightweight, most of the acoustic panel builds on YouTube use a really heavy frame and they have to be like super sturdy and screwed into the wall and stuff. These ones are super lightweight and you can just hang them with some picture wire. Fantastic. We're also going to do before and after audio tests. Feel free to skip to that in the timeline. We're gonna be following along to Into the Mix's acoustic panel guide. He's got the only video with lightweight acoustic panels that I found on YouTube. Definitely watch his video if you want a tutorial that is, you know, thoughtfully put together. That's not what I do here. All right, let's get into it. With the frames, we're using one by two clear pine board. We're going to screw them together with eight by two and a half inch screws. You're going to want to pre-drill the holes and countersink them so that the wood doesn't split. While you're at it, pre-drill the frames for any mounting hardware that you're going to be using on the back of the panels. You should only need to use one screw per corner. If you find you're using more than that, I'd probably look for a higher quality screw. I used regular screws. The frame seems strong. If you twist the top and bottom of the frames, they'll, they'll twist because it's just a single screw. Uh, moving on to the sides of the acoustic panels. We're using 1 8 inch thick hardboard. It's like a particle board. I used 1 8 inch because the thinner this material is, the lighter the panels are going to be. Almost any DIY store or timber merchant will be happy to cut both your timber and these boards into your desired shape and size. I cut them myself because I'm a man. We're going to attach the hard board to the outside of the frame using 3 8 inch staples. They're long enough to get through the 8 inch hard board. It's not super sturdy. Uh, if you put any force on the edge of these panels, uh, they're going to, they're gonna rip off. So it's best to be gentle with these acoustic panels once they're built. Now in the mix, called this an important step, taping up the corners so it doesn't hook on the fabric or cut through it. I didn't do that um, because I'm lazy, but you might wanna do that, not just because it hooks on the fabric, but it'll actually increase the structural integrity of the hardboard sides. For the back of the panels, weed barrier is cheap and easy to work with. Just cut it into size and then staple it to the inside of the back of the frame. It costs about five pounds for 10 or 20 meters of this fabric. Pounds, I don't know what a pound is. The world runs on dollars, Canadian dollars. I just used half inch staples for the weed barrier. All right, insulation. I do not recommend using rock mineral or glass fiber wool. We're going to use rock wool. And these are the most commonly recommended and used. Rock wool safe and sound is a high performing acoustic insulator. But I believe they're simply not safe for health. And because I have no self-worth, I don't care if I breathe in and all the time. You're going to want the outside dimensions of your frame to match the dimensions of your insulation. In this case, I used Rockwool 169031, safe and sound. It's 47 inches by 23 inches, so those are the outer dimensions of my frame. That also determines the size of hardboard you need to cut. My insulation fit nice and snug based on Rockwool's advertised dimensions. When you're ready to cover the front of your panel, I'd recommend using another layer of that membrane if you're using a rock or mineral wool. We are going to go straight ahead and use our acoustically untested fun fabrics from a local fabric store. I like my acoustic panels to remind me of the Further, the legendary bus which drove Timothy Leary around the States on an acid wave. We don't tuck the material in at all. And instead of hiding the folds, we just wrap it like a Christmas present. For mounting hardware, we use screw eyes, put them into those holes we pre-drilled beforehand, and then use picture wire. Uh, you can just Google the type of knot you're supposed to use for picture wire. Make sure to tighten it with pliers so it's not loose. And we have the finished product. These are super lightweight as advertised and they look great. Onto the performance of the panels. Let's check the transient response. 
the transient let's clap our hands and now we're gonna play some music before and after uh, I most videos ugh. Ugh. Now we're going to move on and play some music before and after. Most before and after comparisons don't play music. I think they sound pretty good. Uh, they make this room listenable. They ended up costing more like $50 per panel because of the fun fabrics that I used from the store and Rockwell's kind of expensive. It's never as cheap as it's supposed to be. So in conclusion, I highly recommend constructing your acoustic panels this way. In the Mix did a great job. If you do want to give these panels a shot, follow In the Mix's tutorial. Uh, it's linked in the description and he's far better at this stuff than I am. He probably actually makes music. Please make music with me. I'm lonely and I have no one to play music with. I live in Ca Hey girl. How you doing? Oh, you're such a good girl. You're such a good girl. Come on, girl. Oh, you're such a good girl. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Ooh, scratches, 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 scratches.